Hello and welcome to Math Zone African Motives. In this tutorial, we will be solving problems involving motion and forces. Let's get started. Our first problem is a detailed question about a car's motion and the forces acting on it when it brakes. We'll be calculating its deceleration, the braking force, and the time it takes to stop. We will break this down step by step. First, let's look at the accompanying diagram, figure 3.1. It shows our car, represented as a box with a mass of 900 kilograms, moving with an initial velocity. The brakes are applied, and after a distance of 60 meters, the car comes to a complete stop. This visual confirms the key information provided in the question. The mass, the distance to stop, and the initial velocity of 90 kilometers per hour. Before we calculate anything, let's list the known variables and the formulas we'll use. This will help organize our approach. The initial velocity, u, is 90 km per hour. The car comes to rest, so its final velocity, v, is 0 m per second. The distance it travels, s, is 60 m. And the mass of the car, m, is 900 kg. Notice we have a mixture of units, km per hour and meters. To perform our calculations correctly, we must convert all units to the standard SI units. Let's convert 90 kilometers per hour to meters per second. One kilometer is 1,000 meters, and one hour is 3,600 seconds. So we multiply 90 by 1,000 to get meters and divide by 3,600 to get seconds. This gives us 25 meters per second. Now our initial velocity is 25 meters per second. We are ready to tackle part A, calculating the deceleration. Part A asks for the deceleration. This is just acceleration A, but because the car is slowing down, our answer should be negative. The magnitude of this negative acceleration is the deceleration. We can't use the simple formula V equals U plus at because we don't know the time, T. Instead, we use the equation of motion that relates final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and distance. V squared equals U squared plus 2A as this is the correct formula to use here. Now let's substitute our known values into this equation. The final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is 25. The distance s is 60, and we are solving for a. This simplifies to zero equals 625 plus 120a. By rearranging the equation, we find that it equals negative 5208 meters per second squared. This negative sign indicates the car is slowing down as we expected. The deceleration, which is the magnitude of this acceleration, is 5.208 meters per second squared. Now that we have the deceleration, we can move to part B, calculating the braking force. For part B, we need to find the braking force, which we'll call F. The formula that connects force, mass, and acceleration is Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. This is a fundamental principle in physics. We know the mass of the car is 900 kilograms, and we just calculated the acceleration as 5.208 meters per second squared. Let's multiply them. The result is approximately negative 4687.5 newtons. The negative sign here means the force is acting in the opposite direction of the car's motion, which makes sense for a braking force. The question asks for the braking force, which is the magnitude. Therefore, the braking force is 4687.5 newtons or rounded to one decimal place, 4.7 kilonewtons. For our final calculation, part C, we'll find the time it takes for the car to come to a stop. Part C is about finding the time, T. For this, we can now use the simpler equation of motion. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We can use this because we have now calculated the acceleration. Let's substitute our values. The final velocity V is zero. The initial velocity u is 25. The acceleration a is 5.208, and we're solving for t. This gives us 0 equals 25 minus 5.208t. Rearranging, we get 5.208t equals 25. Dividing 25 by 5.208 gives us approximately 4.8 seconds. So the time taken to bring the car to rest is 4.8 seconds. And there you have it, the full solution to the first problem, broken down into manageable steps. Welcome back to Math Zone African Motives. Let's move on to our second problem. 
This question asks us to find the mass of a truck. We are given its initial velocity, the time it takes to stop, and the braking force applied. Let's begin by extracting the given information, or our knowns, from the problem. The initial velocity, u, is 120 km per hour. The truck is brought to rest, so the final velocity, v, is zero. The time taken, t, is 15 seconds, and the braking force, f, is 20 kN. As before, we must first convert all our units to the standard SI system. This means converting both kilometers per hour and kilonewtons. First, for the velocity, we multiply 120 by 1000 and divide by 3600. This calculation results in an initial velocity of 33333 meters per second. Next, let's convert the braking force. The prefix kilo means 1000. So 20 kilonewtons is equal to 20 times 1,000, which is 20,000 newtons. Importantly, since it's a braking force that stops the truck, it must act in the opposite direction of motion. So the force F is negative 20,000 newtons. Now we have our converted values. We need to find the mass, M. Looking at our formulas, we see that mass is part of Newton's second law. Newton's second law states that force equals mass times acceleration. F equals May. If we rearrange it to solve for mass, we get m equals f divided by a. This is our target formula. We have the force f, but we don't have the acceleration a. This means we have to find the acceleration first. We can do this using our kinematic equations. We can calculate the acceleration using the first equation of motion, v g equals u plus at. We know the final and initial velocities and the time. All the pieces are there. Substituting our values, we get 0 equals 33.33 plus a times 15. Rearranging this equation to solve for a, we find that a equals negative 2.22 meters per second squared. This negative sign again confirms that the truck is decelerating. Great. Now we have the acceleration. We can finally calculate the mass using our rearranged Newton's second law. Mass equals force divided by acceleration. Substituting our values, we get negative 20,000 newtons divided by negative 2.22 meters per second squared. Notice how the two negative signs cancel out, which is good. Mass should always be a positive value. Performing the division gives us approximately 9,000 kilograms. The memo provided for this problem shows a slightly different method for the initial setup, but the final result is the same. The memo first calculates the acceleration using v equals u plus at, then substitutes this value into f equals ma. Our step-by-step -step approach arrived at the exact same answer, 9,000 kilograms. So the mass of the truck is 9,000 kilograms. Welcome back to Math Zone African Motives. For our final scene, let's recap what we've learned. Today, we've gone through two complete examples of solving motion and force problems. We started with a problem where we needed to find deceleration, force, and time. We learned that for problems involving distance and changes in velocity, the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as is often our best tool. Once we have the acceleration, we can use f equals ma to find the force, and v equals u plus at to find the time. Then we move to our second problem, where we had to calculate the mass of a truck given its velocity, time to stop, and the braking force. This problem highlighted the importance of first finding the acceleration using v equals u plus at, because the acceleration was a necessary component for our target formula, f equals ma, which allowed us to solve for the mass. In both cases, we saw the crucial first step is to read the problem carefully, list the knowns, and identify our unknown. The next, equally important step, is to convert all units into the standard SI system to avoid errors. Finally, we must choose the correct formulas from our toolkit of equations of motion and Newton's laws to solve for the unknown values. I hope these step-by-step -step examples have made these concepts clearer. Understanding these foundational physics problems is a key part of your learning journey. Thank you for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please subscribe to MathZone African Motives for more videos. We'll see you in the next one.